Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including a slew of new refreshed Model S sightings, new looks at the interior of that new Model S, our first look at Tesla's upcoming version 11, Tesla's new Cybertruck machine, Giga Berlin production confirmations, and more. So let's get into it. The Cybertruck has been sort of up in the air as far as updates since the announcement event. Elon Musk has given us a few clues, but no new photos or anything have been posted to confirm things he has talked about. The last we heard from him, he said there would possibly be an update in Q2 of 2021 and that they are focused on the factory. Well, we know the progress of building the factory is underway, but we haven't heard much about the actual production of the Cybertruck there. When talking about Cybertruck production at the Q4 earnings call, Elon said, quote, we're actually going to be using even bigger machines for the rear body of Cybertruck because you've got, obviously, it's a bigger vehicle and you've got a long truck bed that's going to do a lot of loads. So we'll be using an 8,000 ton casting press for the rear body casting as opposed to 6,000 tons for Model Y. So 6,000 tons was the biggest casting machine in the world. And he's talking about how 8,000 will now be the biggest casting machine beating out their previous casting machine for the Model Y. Well, just this past week, we heard from Tesla's GigaPress machine supplier, and it all but confirms that they have received orders for the Cybertruck press machine to be installed at Giga Texas. The general manager for IDRA, or IDRA, confirmed in a new video that, quote, IDRA makes a world's first for technological innovation, and we are very proud to announce that today, on March 16th, 2021, we have been able to secure the first order for an 8,000 ton die casting machine. While they didn't specifically name Tesla, Tesla uses this company for their current 6,000 pound Giga Press machines, so it seems obvious that they will be making this new version for Tesla. The reason these machines are important is because it helps Tesla greatly simplify the production process and improve parts on their vehicles. With the Model 3, the rear underbody consisted of about 70 parts. Now with the Model Y and Giga Press machine, the rear underbody is one piece. Clearly this type of large pressing technology will be vital for the Cybertruck since the Cybertruck is itself an exoskeleton. It'll be very interesting to see exactly which piece this machine makes for the Cybertruck, but it's likely that it is the same piece, just a larger version of it since the Cybertruck is that much larger than the Model Y. It's a good sign for Cybertruck production coming at least close to on time. Tesla originally promised delivery of the Cybertruck in late 2021, but Elon has said that they will deliver that if they're lucky. There are so many moving pieces to get this truck underway, and it is a completely new, radically different vehicle for Tesla that will surely present its own issues. In any case, we'll probably see these machines getting delivered and installed at Giga Texas, along with Tesla's 6,000 pound Giga Press machines for the Model Y. Now moving on to the Model S, Tesla released the details of the refreshed Model S in January at their Q4 2020 earnings call. At the time, they said it would deliver in February, but March seemed like the most realistic timeline after some delays at their factory and from suppliers. Tesla's factory did shut down completely for a couple days and Elon Musk said they retooled the production line. Additionally, there has been an industry-wide chip shortage that has to be affecting Tesla in some way. As I talked about in my last video, it has now leaked that Tesla is indeed using the same chip that the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X are using, AMD Ryzen, and AMD has been facing shortages this entire year. It has affected the launches of these systems and could potentially be affecting the Model S timelines. If not that, it could be instead affecting Tesla's pricing since they did recently raise prices on a few of their cars, and maybe that's because they're paying a premium for their chip supply to be uninterrupted. When talking with order holders, I've heard some people say that their delivery manager still says March, and others say that the normal Plaid model is actually delayed until May or June due to production issues. For the Plaid Plus model, Tesla announced it to be delivered in late 2021, and now the website says mid-2022. It's unclear if that is when new orders will be delivered due to high demand, or if the first Plaid Plus Model S will not actually be delivered until then. Currently, it appears that Tesla's production line for the Model S and X are being retooled with a project description of GA S slash X tool install. This was recorded on the 12th, so it's possible that this retool has been completed or it is still in progress for the new Model S is being made. In any case, we have already seen Tesla make a good deal of new Model S's and a few Model X's. Now we are seeing them even more present out in the wild, hinting that these could get delivered before the end of March. First, the Model S was spotted likely doing winter testing out in Lake Tahoe in the snow. From the front, we can see that the side repeater camera is large. From the back, we can see the matte black trim that really emphasizes the fact that this is the refreshed model. Aside from that, without the trained eye, it's a little hard to tell these apart. Inside, we can see the round steering wheel yet again that Tesla has not mentioned at all. 
Clearly, this is a prototype with a number of trim pieces missing on the inside and some diagnostic cables hanging down from the screen. From the front again at a different angle, you can really see that this side camera is sticking out. Depending on the angle, it sometimes looks a little intrusive, so I'm curious to see how this camera sticks out when I see it in person. Here it has tape on it, which is likely drawing even more attention to the fact that it sticks out more than before. I'm very curious to see if this is a Plaid model or not. It's the same exterior as the Plaid model Tesla was winter testing and posted about a month ago, so it is possible. Now, the closest photos we've gotten of the Model S interior have just leaked, and they show just how cool the interior upgrades of this car really are. From this first photo, we can see that it has the round steering wheel, no yoke. The steering wheel has all the same buttons that you would expect on the yoke steering wheel and that we've talked about in previous videos, but the screen is running an entirely new interface and it's beautiful. It's most likely our first look at Tesla's version 11, but it's also the required interface changes Tesla has needed to make when switching the Model S to a horizontal display. Over on the left side of the screen, you have the main controls for the trunk, front, locking, charge port, cameras, and more. Very easily accessible in nicely organized cards. It appears that this is coming over on top of the main part of the screen, and that can be seen here in this video also posted on Reddit. These normal controls pull over top of whatever the main screen is handling. This is a similar menu to the current driver options in Tesla's, but the bottom area, along with all of the text and fonts, has been changed. I personally love the look of the bottom part of the screen, and it reminds me of some of the best parts of iOS. One quick note is that this car includes insane mode as well as drag strip mode with the rocket ship emoji to top it off. Smart shift is turned on, which is the feature Elon has talked about. The car shifts for you. The next screen appears to be the main display, and again, it's a huge improvement on current software. Maps are up there on a card, your phone connection is below it, and media is over to the right. Since they have a lot of real estate on this 17-inch display that doesn't need to have driving visualizations or speed or anything like that, it seems like they have really been able to make this software shine. I'm personally hoping that these changes make their way to the Model 3 and Y, even if they have to be condensed to a degree. Having the Maps card there looks incredibly useful, and everything is much more refined, especially when compared to the current left side card that Tesla changed with the holiday update. I really hope this is what we have to look forward to with version 11. Now from that same person, we got shots of both of those Model S's that they saw at the Kettleman City Supercharger. And while they don't have a ton of road to go off of right here to do a full 0-60 to 60 launch or anything, we can see just how quick these cars are. This is most likely the Plaid model that they're showing off here, and it is doing a crazy launch right here, even though, again, there's not a ton of road for them to really finish out this launch with. Still very impressive and very exciting to see these out on the roads testing. They're definitely going to be delivered soon. Now, some have speculated that the yoke steering wheel will be reserved only for the Plaid and Plaid Plus Model S, and the round wheel will be only for the long range model. I do not think this is the case whatsoever. In fact, Tesla has not even mentioned a round steering wheel for the Model S. In every single photo they have officially posted, it simply includes a yoke steering wheel, no matter which configuration you choose. On top of that, in Tesla's own Plaid testing video, we can zoom in and see a round steering wheel. So they could be testing different configurations and steering wheels across all trims, but if the round wheel is exclusive to the long range model, why is it on a plaid model? Next, a Model S was spotted in Santa Cruz, and this one has a yoke steering wheel, along with a white interior. As far as I can tell, this is a long range model. When you configure a Model S on Tesla's website and choose the white interior, you'll notice that the wood center console and wood trim on the door only exists on the long range model. The plaid and plaid plus versions include a carbon fiber center console in the official photos. So this is a long range Model S with a yoke steering wheel. No reason to believe Tesla is keeping the yoke exclusive to the higher priced models. According to the same person who got to look in the Model S earlier, they said that as of now, since Tesla has not received NHTSA approval for the yoke wheel, they are delivering the round steering wheel and will be offering retrofits free of charge to owners who took delivery right at the beginning while the approval was pending. In the future, you'll be able to choose between the two. This is what I was hoping for, and hopefully Tesla will be clear about this once deliveries begin. Especially since it shows up as an option on the official order agreement form. This is a Model X order agreement form, but again, it is for a long range model and shows the yoke steering wheel as being included. Tesla usually only puts things on their own line if they are an option, although autopilot is technically included no matter what. In any case, we can see the yoke steering wheel on this Model S spotted in Santa Cruz, and the exterior features the new 21 inch wheels that Tesla is selling as a $4,500 option. 
In person, they look quite a bit darker than on Tesla's website, but it could just be the lighting. Also, notice the camera sticking out in the front seems pretty large to me and like it might bother some new owners, or maybe it'll just be a non-issue. Next up and arguably most important, a truckload of Model S's was spotted leaving Tesla's factory. Usually this is the first sign of deliveries. When the Model Y was first getting ready for delivery, it wasn't until they were spotted on trucks that it turned out deliveries were truly about to start. These photos were taken by Mark on Twitter saying, quote, Jackpot, refreshed S and plaid S spotted on truck leaving Fremont factory, couldn't see any yokes. We can see five different refreshed Model S's on this particular truck. Four have the normal wheels, one has the 21 inch wheels, and there are three different paint colors. So if you live near California and are expecting one of these configurations soon, your Model S could very well have been on this truck. Tesla pushes their deliveries really hard at the end of each quarter, so if these are on trucks, I absolutely see them getting delivered before the end of March. Even if it's March 30th, Tesla wants to be able to say that they delivered the Model S in Q1 of 2021. They did a similar thing with the Model Y exactly a year ago, although those deliveries started a bit earlier in the month. Still, they delivered it in March of 2020 for Q1, and that looks good for Tesla, even if it's right towards the cutoff of the quarter. The last Model S update from Elon came on March 8th saying, quote, still many fine details to address, but the final product will be fantastic. There's nothing else even close. So if you're taking delivery of a new Model S soon and live anywhere near Southern California, I'd love to come review it. And you can contact me directly on Twitter and Instagram at RyanShotTech or email me at the address in the description below. Related to the production of the new Model S and X, Tesla is officially shutting down their assembly plant located in the Netherlands. Now you may not have known that this plant existed, but it has existed since 2015. Until recently, it performed the final assembly and testing of the Model S and X before going to European markets like the Netherlands, Belgium, Germany, and France. According to the report, quote, Tesla will stop very shortly with assembling the Model S and Model X in Tilburg. The models were upgraded at the end of January, which changes the production process in the United States so that the assembly in the Netherlands is no longer possible. There are about 96 jobs at the assembly plant that are at risk, but sources say that Tesla is hoping to transfer these jobs to other positions within the company. This location may be repurposed for Tesla or closed in favor of their Giga Berlin factory currently under construction. Now, speaking of Giga Berlin, a recent meeting in Brandenburg is confirming what we have been hearing, that Tesla will begin production there in the middle of this year. Quote, during a meeting of the Brandenburg Committee for Infrastructure and Regional Planning, today it was stated that the production start of Giga Berlin is confirmed for the end of July, latest August. Just a small update there, further confirming what has been rumored, but it looks good for European Model Y holders as that car will be produced there to start. The updated Model Y for Europe should also be the first to include Tesla's new 4680 battery cells and structural battery pack, so it will be a big step forward for some new technologies Tesla spoke about at Battery Day but has not delivered yet. Regarding full self-driving, we got another small update from Elon Musk over the weekend. The last we had heard was about the possibility of a download beta button for all customers, and then later that the beta was expanded and some users were revoked. The latest from Elon is that, quote, given significant architectural changes, including fundamental improvements to pure vision, there is limited value to testing 8.x, hoping to upload version 9 and button next month. So while Elon Musk is over there proving that Elon time doesn't as much apply to their cars with things like the Model S and Model Y timelines being pushed up, he is also showing that Elon time is very much still a thing. The Roadster, Semi, Cybertruck, and now potentially Plaid Plus Model S have all seen delays, and full self-driving is by far the biggest delay Tesla has dealt with, but Elon keeps tweeting about it. This new tweet sounds like there's a chance at a beta button coming by the end of April, and this follows up Elon saying that it would come in around 10 days over two weeks ago. Tesla and communication do not go well together, and it's by far my biggest critique of the company. Full self-driving is no exception, and I really think Elon could be much clearer about what they are doing before he tweets. At this point, it feels like he tweets after one meeting, then they have another meeting and completely change their mind, and customers are somewhat just left in the dark after paying thousands of dollars for this promised future feature. Now next up in a similar boat, Tesla has promised hardware 3.0 upgrades to customers who bought the full self-driving package on older hardware. Tesla has promised that future features will simply be a software update, but hardware updates have actually become necessary. This is why Tesla has upgraded customers for free, but Europe has had a bit of a different story. Tesla promised these upgrades in March of 2020, then end of March, then July, then October, and now Tesla's website says Q2 of 2021. 
Many feel that since Europe is tighter on full self-driving regulation, that this upgrade wouldn't actually give new features, but the hardware 3.0 upgrade is required for traffic light and stop sign control, sign recognition, and more, which are all currently available in Europe. Basically, Tesla keeps delaying this and needs to make it right. Again, communication is not great and isn't great across the board between Tesla and customers. Full self-driving has been quite a mess of a rollout, and I really hope that Tesla upgrades these customers and delivers a product that is worth the wait. Time will tell. Last up today is a little news about Rivian. Rivian is set to launch their first electric trucks this year, and they just announced their own version of a supercharger network that looks incredibly impressive. One of the biggest advantages of buying a Tesla is the supercharging network. Nearly everywhere I need to go, I know I can find a Tesla charger and keep driving without stress. Other electric cars continue to have a significant disadvantage in this area, and great cars like the Ford Mustang Mach-E are relying on third-party chargers that can vary greatly in speed and reliability. Tesla has over 20,000 stalls at over 2,000 different locations, and their network continues to grow every day. It seems like Rivian understands this because they already have plans for a similar network, saying, quote, the Rivian Adventure Network will grow to more than 3,500 fast chargers at over 600 sites by the end of 2023. Each site will have multiple chargers and will be conveniently located on highways and main roads, often by cafes and shops. These DC fast chargers will be for Rivian owners only, with details on pricing and associated programs coming soon. Here's the map of the locations with those 600 plus sites and over 3,500 fast chargers by the end of 2023. The map at its core actually looks quite a bit similar to Tesla's supercharger network, and it just shows how serious Rivian is about electric vehicles. They understand what a huge advantage this is for Tesla and are looking to do the same. On top of the Rivian Adventure Network, they also announced Rivian Waypoints, which are their own version of Tesla's destination chargers that charge at level two at hotels, restaurants, parks, and more. They plan to install 10,000 of these in the US and Canada by 2023 as well. One slight advantage for Tesla is that their V3 superchargers can charge up to 250 kilowatts, whereas Rivian's will top out at 200 kilowatts. In practice, I don't think this will make that big of a difference though, since you are rarely actually seeing 250 kilowatts at a V3 Tesla supercharger. Rivian does promise 300 kilowatts in the future, so that may end up a slight advantage for them. This is an exclusive Rivian network using CCS and J1772, and will give these vehicles a big head start with tons of charging options as they start delivering cars. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you wanna check out a video detailing all the competition Tesla will be facing in 2021, you can check out that video linked over here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.